YouTube. Sipping tea time with your boy, the Bad Wolf. Talking about that boy, Mr. A again. All right, so this is some time later, and for those people who've been watching the uh, videos, yeah, you're thinking, I can't believe you guys are still kicking with Mr. A. Why? I don't know. It was kind of like a wounded dog syndrome. We just let him slide. But that was his hustle. is pretending to be wounded and hoping people will let him slide. And then once you don't let them slide no more, that's when they uh, disappear on you. All right, so anyway, to the free wedding. So this is some time later, him and we'll just call her W, all right? So him and this girl, W, um, we'll call her Winnie, okay? Uh, met, and everybody hoped that her iciness business good well-to-do family educated would elevate a mr anthony's game nope it's kind of like if you tie balloons to a sinking ship guess which one's gonna win yeah man all right so they get married or they, they want to get married they take they get you know he proposes she accepts all that good stuff and they got no money. Got kicked out of both their parents' houses. They come to me for help. Because they know I'm the know-everybody, know fix-it man, you know, got a little loot, be doing things, you know. So, and he was like, I'm going to make you my best man. And that was the first time this has ever been offered to me. So I'm flattered. I didn't get this from nobody in my family, none of my other friends, you know, nobody's ever asked me. So I then put aside all the BS that he's put me through, the money, the lies, the girls, all that stuff, right? Doing what a best man should be. Call me his brother. He's like, you're my brother, man. You're my brother. So I'm like, all right. So I decided I'm going to help you out. So I rented my fraternity building on my name. For a super cheap, super cheap pin price. So he had a free place to have his wedding. But what I didn't know is he was going around to everybody asking them to hook him up. So he went to our friend Mel and got a free priest to do the wedding. The priest was like, I'll do the wedding, but you still, you know, because Mel was going to pay that person for it. But the priest was like, I'm going to buy, I'll get the um, certificates and all this stuff paid for. You just got to pay me back. They're like, yeah, no problem. They never paid him back for it. Um, they went to our local bar and told them they didn't have any money. So the bar actually held a fundraiser and got money for Winnie's dress. They didn't have any food. So they went to everybody's parents and like, hey, we don't have food. We, we need a little help. So people's families brought food. I heard it was going to be a dry wedding. So BYOB, bring your own bo booze and beer. Okay. So all of us people and friends brought our own liquor. Right. Okay. Well, Anthony didn't have money for his tux and stuff like that. So when he goes to the, the shop to get fitted, he's like, well, how much is it for me? And they told him the price. He's like, shit. And then the guy goes, but if you get, you know, eight, nine, ten groomsmen, they basically will cover the cost for yours. So he had eight, nine, ten groomsmen. All right. So the day of the wedding comes, we're all standing there, getting, you know, doing the thing. And then Darren doesn't show up. So we're like calling Darren, calling Darren, doesn't answer, doesn't show up, right? So we're like, okay, well, maybe something happened to him, you know, hope he's okay, and whatever else. Well, later on, we come to find out, because Darren had never gotten paid back from Mr. A from the Butler Inn incident, Darren was like, I'm going to make that cat pay for that tux. I'm not even going to show up for his bull wedding. Mmm, stuck him. Ninja. Wow, ice cold, right? So, then, we're at the wedding, and I hear something go, Tss. I'm like, what is that? 
I didn't see anybody bring any liquor, especially that sounds like a bottle, you know. So I look over, this cat comes walking out all gingerly. I'm like, hey, what's up, man? Where'd you get that? He's like, oh, in the kitchen. They got, they got coolers full of beer back there. I'm like, no, they don't. I'm like, bro, I was like, you can have that one. I was like, but those are mine. I was like, I pay. This is a BYOB. You know what that means? Bring your own beer. So next thing I know, other people are walking out of the kitchen with our, me and my friend's liquor. So we, I said, I stopped in the middle of the wedding or in the reception. I was like, everybody who's part of LXD, um, apparently some people don't know that it's BYOB. So uh, let's get our liquor and move it out, move it out, move it out. So right through the whole thing, everybody that was part of our crew went and got their liquor and starts moving it out. Everybody in the wedding party was like, was like, oh, so there's no liquor at this party? Within three minutes, 50% of everybody there left. Gone. Then we come to find out that they were supposed to be paying C-Note for DJing their wedding, you know, with tips and whatever else, but nobody, being a black wedding, uh, really tipped. And they didn't pay C-Note any money. So they basically got... I mean, he did say he's kind of like, you know, with DJ at Forum, you know, basically for free, but, you know, like some tips. But if you don't get no tips and you don't get no thank you money, you, 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 so they got a free DJ. They paid for nothing for this entire wedding. Nothing. They got a free wedding. True hustlers for real, man. Wow, the saga continues. All right, guys. That's all I got for stories for right now, but we will have some more stories about other people and other things coming up. So thanks for listening in. Don't forget to hit that bell, like, and subscribe. Holla at your boy.